Hey, this is Arthur Hill, Senior Technical Analyst with StockCharts.com. It is Thursday, July 11th, and you're tuned in to On Trend. Today, we're going to keep you on trend using breath indicators. I'm going to show you why the NASDAQ and the NYC are not representative of the market. I'm going to show you how to plot index and sector specific AD lines, and we'll look at a breath troika for the S&P 1500. So we're going to work with the AD line today. And what I'm not going to do is what I'm doing here is show the NYSE AD line with the S&P 500. Because here at Stock Charts, we don't have to do that. And for one, the NYSE AD line doesn't match up with the S&P 500 for two reasons at least. First of all, the S&P 500 has over 100 stocks that come from the NASDAQ. So you're leaving out a lot of stocks from the NASDAQ that are part of the S&P 500 if you just use the NYSE AD line. And then the second reason is there are a number of stocks or listings in the NYSE that are included in that broad AD line calculation. And that means there's a number of funds and trust that are not common stocks and they are included in that calculation and they can distort the AD line for the NYSE. So let's look at a couple of these issues first. So if we want to know how many stocks in the S&P 500 come in from the NYSE and how many from the NASDAQ, we can find that out using the scan engine here at Stock Charts. And so I've got a basic scan here. I've just got group is S&P 500, and then I've got group is S&P 400. But you can see that I've got the two forward slashes in front of that line and a two forward slashes in front of the next line. And that means I'm just going to ignore those and focus on the first line there. And I want the exchange to be the NYSE. So I click run scan and I look at the results and I'm really just interested in the total there. And there you can see 370 stocks come from the NYSE. So that means 130 stocks of the S&P 500 come from the NASDAQ. So that's 26% of stocks in the S&P 500 are from the NASDAQ and 74% are from the NYSE. And we can do that for mid caps as well. Just click run scan. And there you can see that we have 268 of the 400 stocks are from the New York Stock Exchange. That's 67%. So around 33% are from the NASDAQ. And then if we look at small caps, we can see that number decrease even more. So we've gone from 76% was it to 67%. And now you can see 281 stocks of the S&P 600 are from the NYSE. And that is less than 50%. So there are more stocks in the S&P 600 index from the NASDAQ than the NYSE. In addition, I went to the NASDAQ.com website to find a company list for stocks in the NASDAQ, the NYSE, and the Amex. And there you can see is a link or links to download those lists. And so I want to show you what's in those lists so you can see what is part of the breadth indicators there. So here's an Excel file with the stocks in the NASDAQ, and I've sorted it by market cap there. And you can see the beginning ones don't have any market cap because they are some sort of trust or fund or something. And so I have to scroll down when I start getting to market cap. And there you can see I start getting to 113,000 market cap. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to eliminate all these ones with zero market cap because I want to count the number of stocks that have a market cap under 100 million, which is quite small. So you can see I'm going down this list. I'm at 90 million and there's the cutoff there at 100 million. So there are over a thousand stocks in the NASDAQ with a market cap under 100 million. That is a lot of small stocks that are being included in those AD statistics. And yeah, whether it's good or bad is open for today debate, but I don't want to have market caps under 100 million in my AD stats personally. And if we scroll all the way down to the bottom, we can see the largest stocks 
in the NASDAQ. That would be Microsoft over $1 trillion, Amazon 978 billion, Alphabet and Apple come in as well as Facebook getting over $500 billion market cap. So here's a list of stocks in the NYSE. And again, it is sorted by market cap. And you can see in the beginning, we have stocks or issues listings that are listed as zero for market cap. And that's because either they're some sort of preferred issue or they are a trust or a fund. And so if we scroll all the way down until we get to some stocks with a market cap, you can see there are over 700 issues there that do not have a market cap there. And then if we scroll down to the bottom, we can see the largest stocks in the NYSE. And I found this quite interesting. The largest listing is actually an ADR. It is, drum roll please, Alibaba Holdings. As you can see there, there's the top 10 there. Baba at 436 billion is the top holding. It is bigger than Disney, Bank of America, MasterCard, Procter & Gamble, ExxonMobil, and JP Morgan. Who would have thought? And you can also see in these top 10 stocks, we don't have any like true technology stocks. I know that uh, JP, sorry, I know that MasterCard and Visa are listed in the technology sector, but the really payment processors, I'm not sure how much of a, they're not really true technology stocks, I don't think. And I think you have to go all the way up to the number um, 198 billion up there is Oracle is the first true technology. You also have Taiwan Semiconductor, which is a technology stock. So here's a chart with the New York composite in the top window. And then I've got New York advances in the second window using an up down pair. And I'll show you how I did that in just a second here. And I've got New York declines there. So you can see we had 785 advances, 1,084 declines, and then advances minus declines would be plus 701 net, net advances there. And there you can see how that line changes over time. And then if I scroll down a little further, I can see the total issues on the NYSE. And it's not as stable as you might think. You can see up here in December, January is in the 3,080 area. And it fell down to around 3,030 or 20. And it's kind of stabilized around 3,040 the last few months. And then there's the NYSE AD line. But as far as how I created this chart, we've got something called up down pair as an indicator. And I've got NYAD V, dollar NYAD V for advances, comma, dollar NY DEC for declines. And that'll create that up down pair. And if I want to make an AD line, I've got price and I've got my NYAD, which is net advances indicator. And then you can see I've selected cumulative as the chart style. And then you can open up the advanced options. You can see they're closed now, but if I open them up and then I can add a moving average and I added a moving average to that plot. So you can see it's a 200 day moving average and the AD line there. So let's see how the New York Stock Exchange AD line and the New York composite look together, as well as the NASDAQ composite and the NASDAQ AD line. And we've got that all on one chart here. So we can see the New York composite. Well, it's still below that January 2018 high there, considerably below. It has not exceeded that high. And if we look at the AD line, it made a new high there in August. And then it made another new high in the spring and here in the summer, it's making new highs. So the NYSE AD line is clearly stronger than the New York composite there. Then if we look at the NASDAQ, we got a different story here. All right, we see the NASDAQ composite hit new highs there in the spring and in the summer. So the NASDAQ composite is in a clear uptrend. But if we look at the NASDAQ AD line, it peaked back in August 2018 and formed a lower high in May. So it is not keeping up with the NASDAQ. Now you can read into that what you will, but what I want to do is I want to look at index specific breadth indicators. I want to see the S&P 500 
with the S&P 500 AD line. And I'll show you how we can do that. So before we get to plotting the AD lines for the S&P 500 and S&P small cap 600, I want to show you where you can find these symbols. So up at the top of every web page on the right hand corner, you're going to see the search icon there. And I'm going to click on that icon and open up the search box. And I'm going to search for advanced decline percent. And I'm going to put a little minus for volume because I don't want volume in the results. Now the initial results are going to be for the support articles, as you can see there. But if I go down to the bottom, I can click the symbols button to see all the symbols that have advanced decline percent in them. And we have them for the 11 sector SPDRs, for the Dow Industrials, Utilities and Transports, as well as for the S&P 500 and S&P Small Cap 600 there. So there you can see how the symbols work. It's dollar MID ADP. And if you want it for the consumer discretionary sector, it's dollar XLY ADP. The only thing that changes is the three letter or the three letters at the beginning of the symbol. For the NASDAQ 100, dollar NDX ADP. So why do we want to track the advanced decline lines? Well, because these advanced decline indicators, they measure the degree of participation. So when we get an advance in one of the indexes like the S&P 500, we want to see the advanced decline line rising as well and rising by a considerable amount and keeping pace with the advance in the index. That shows you that the majority of stocks are participating in the advance. If the index forms a higher high and the advanced decline line, for instance, forms a lower high, then you know you got waning participation and that could be a warning. So what I've got here is I've got the S&P 500 in the top window and I've got the S&P 500 AD line in the lower window. You can see the symbol dollar SPX ADP and I put that as an indicator using price and then for the style I'm plotting it as a cumulative indicator to get the AD line there. So we can see here that the AD line broke out well before the S&P 500. It was at a new high there in late January and the S&P 500 did not hit a new high until April there and again here in June. But if we look at the AD line for the S&P 500, it continues to move higher. We had the correction in May but it was already back at a new high in the early part of June. So the AD line was leading the S&P 500. And with another new high in the AD line, I view that as positive for the S&P 500. And you can see it's well above its 200 day moving average. So now we've got the AD line for mid caps. And we can see here that mid caps aren't doing that well as far as the price charts concerned because they have yet to break above their or even challenge the highs from 2018. But if we look at the AD line, it was hitting a new high in mid-February. So that showed you that within the index, there was enough participation. And then we had a little correction there into March, a little correction into May, but each time we moved to new highs. So the AD lines moving to new highs tells me that participation is strong within the S&P mid cap 400 and that's net positive for the market. And then we look at the small cap AD line. It is the weakest of the group, but you can see that it too hit a new high there in the latter part of February and again in April and early May. Now we got a bounce here in June we're still below that high, so that's why it is one of the weaker of the AD lines. But you kind of got to take the weight of the evidence here. And if you look at the S&P 500 AD line, the S&P mid cap 400 AD line, they are clearly making new highs in July and keeping pace. And that is the majority of the market. But we can take this even one step further. Now, some may argue that the S&P 500 is a bit narrow for an AD line. We need a broader index or a broader basket of stocks. Well, we can do that with the S&P 1500. And that, of course, is a combination of the S&P 500, the S&P mid cap 400 and the S&P small cap 600. So you can see right there, you've got a thousand stocks 
that are not part of the S&P 500. They're either mid caps or small caps. And there is the 80% indicator for the S&P 1500 dollar SUP ADP. This is a very broad basket of stocks and a very good representation for the market as a whole. Let's take a look. So I'm back on the advanced scan workbench here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to scan for stocks in the S&P 1500. And in order to create that group of the S&P 1500, I need group is S&P 500 or group is S&P 400 or group is S&P 600. And I close those three, those three clauses with brackets there. So either one of those three is true. And I want stocks that are in the NYSE. So when I finish that scan code, I run the scan and you can see from the results here, 919 stocks in the S&P 1500 are from the NYSE. So that's 61%. So that means 39% of stocks in the S&P 1500 are from the NASDAQ. And that is the reason why we need to use a broad breadth indicator that includes stocks from the NYSE and from the NASDAQ. And I think the S&P 1500 is the perfect index to base your breadth indicators. So returning to the chart, you can see I've got the S&P 1500 in the top window and the S&P 1500 AD line in the lower window. And look here at the beginning of 2018. We can see that we had a sharp decline into February. We had a retest of that low in March, early April. And you can see the AD line held up well with a higher low. In fact, it was already at a new high there in the latter part of April. So it was doing just fine. Then we had a downturn in the AD line in September, October, and a sharp decline in November, December. We broke below the 200 day, so that was a negative, but we rebounded right back above the 200 day. And look where the AD line hit a new high, mid-February. And that was just when the S&P 1500 was breaking above its 200 day moving average. So the AD line was hitting new highs into May, telling you that the bull market was fine. We got the correction into May with the AD line. And then with the June surge, we've gotten a new high. So the AD line hitting a new high for the S&P 1500 and confirmed by the new high in the S&P 500 and the S&P 1500 index here uh, tells you that the bull market is doing just fine. Now you might say, okay, advanced decline lines are fine, but you know, I really like volume. And you can look at advanced decline volume, which is basically up volume, less down volume. And we can do that for these same sector SPDRs and indexes that I just showed you. So here I've done a search for advanced decline percent and volume. And there you can see we've got the NASDAQ 100 AD volume percent indicator. And the difference is it's dollar NDX UDP instead of ADP. So just change that A to a U and you have the up volume down volume line for the index here. We also have it for the Dow utilities, transports and industrials, as well as the S&P 1500, 500, 400 and 600. And as I said, the 11 sector SPDRs as well. We have to scroll down to see those symbols. XLE UDP, XTL UDP, XLF UDP, and so on. Now, since I'm on a bit of a roll here with these indicators, we've also got high low percent indicators for the same group, the 11 sector SPDRs and the indexes here. And you can see dollar XLP, HLP. Instead of uh, using UDP or ADP at the end, you just use HLP. And that is new highs minus new lows divided by total issues. And this gives you a really good sense of where the leadership is within the sectors. The sectors with the most new highs are clearly having the most stocks that are leading. And by using high low percent, in other words, net new highs is a percentage of total issues in each sector. You can compare those numbers across the 11 sectors. And this is just one of the reasons why or what separates stock charts from a lot of other websites. We have access to all these key breadth indicators that you're not going to find elsewhere. And you can chart them and you can follow them on a regular basis to up your game. 
So let's plot the AD volume line for the S&P 1500 along with the AD line. So I've got the AD line in the middle window and I've got the AD volume line in the lower window and both of them have the 200 day moving average in red. So we can see here that everything was doing fine in September. Everything was hitting a new high. So we really didn't get a warning in September. You're not going to get a warning every time. Uh, we can see that we got a break below the 200 day in the AD line in December and in the AD volume line as well. But then we got to move right back above for both of these above the 200 day. So that told you that things were picking up quite quick. And then we got a new high in the AD line in February confirmed with a new high in the, well, the AD volume line and the AD line. And so that told you that things were looking good. Participation was broad with the AD line moving higher, higher highs and higher lows. And the AD volume line was doing the same higher highs and higher lows. So as long as this sequence continues and we have a new high in both the AD volume line and the AD line, that tells you that breath is doing pretty good. Now we got a little unique feature here where we can do a slider on the date scale there at the bottom. And we can see how the AD line and AD volume line performed in the past. And I'm going to go back, you know, we had a top here in 2015 and see how the AD volume line and AD line acted here. But what we can see is there's the AD volume line peaking in May and moving lower into July there. And the S&P 500 or the S&P 1500 was flat during that time, but the AD volume line was moving lower. The AD line was also relatively flat, but there was some selling pressure coming in on the volume side. And we had a clear breakdown there in August along with the market there. So then we got a little bounce and then we broke down again. You can see the AD volume line with lower lows and lower highs. And then there's that breakdown in January. But what caught my eye here is the three breakouts. All right, there we have the AD volume line breaking out there in late February of 2016. The AD line breaking out as well and the S&P 500. And that was a pretty good breakout and it was confirmed by the breath indicators as well. If we go back to 2016, we can see the S&P 500 hit a lower low and just broke below its 200 day moving average there in late June. That was, of course, the reaction to the initial Brexit vote. Yeah, remember that way long ago. But if you look at the AD line, it formed a higher low. It did not confirm with a lower low. And if you look at the AD volume line, it also formed a higher low. So that was telling you that, you know, price in the S&P 500 was not really telling the whole story because the shares within the AD line was holding up well and the AD volume line was holding up well. So I've mentioned three indicators so far and one broad index. So now let's put them all together. On this chart here, we've got the S&P 1500 index in the top. I could use the S&P 500. Uh, but the S&P 1500 index matches the indicators I'm using. I've got the AD line in the second window. I've got the AD volume line in the third window. And in the lower window, I've got the high low line. And that is a cumulative measure of high low percent. So when new highs outnumber new lows, that, no, that line rises. And when new lows start outnumbering new highs, that line falls. And I've got a 20 day moving average on this indicator here in red. I've got a 200 day on the AD volume line and a 200 day on the AD line and a 200 day on the S&P 1500. But using these breadth indicators, you can easily get a weight of the evidence approach to your broad market analysis using these moving averages. You can see when all three are below their moving averages, that's negative, as was the case in December. And then when all three are above, that is positive, as was the case in the latter part of January. So when two of the three are above their moving average, then, you know, that is favoring the bulls. But when three of the three are above their moving average, that is unequivocally bullish. So we can see that the 80 line has been above its 200 day 
since January, mid-January. The AD volume line since mid-January as well. The high-low line rose up until May, and then you can see it turned down, but then turned back up. And the second week of June, it was back above that moving average and continues to rise. So right now, all three of these indicators are confirming the bull market, as is the new high in the S&P 1500 index and the S&P 500 index. Now, it's real easy. Once you've created this chart, you can switch to the other sector SBDRs or the other indexes with just a change of the symbol. So I'm going to go up here to the symbol entry box. And instead of the S&P 1500, I'm going to do XLK for technology. And now I'm going to add the technology indicators. So we've got SUP ADP. I'm going to change that to XLK ADP. I'm going to change it to XLK UDP for the advanced decline volume line. And I'm going to change it to XLK high, low percent. And I'll just click update and boom, I've got a new chart telling me what's happening with the technology sector. And we can see it is one of the strongest sectors. If we look at the AD line, it was back above its 200 day in the earlier part of January, as was the AD volume line, well before the technology ETF crossed above its 200 day. And the high low line was rising there in late January. And then here in May, it just flattened out and didn't go below its 20 day moving average. So it was holding up better. We also had a bit of a tell here. You can see the AD volume line flattened out in May and June, adds to the AD line, whereas the XLK moved lower. So there's a little bit of less weakness, if you will, from May to June in these indicators. And then they turned up pretty sharply in early June. And of course, XLK moved to a new high. So if you want to find out more about these breadth indicators or any indicator we have at Stock Charts, you can go to the Chart School and there you will find a whole host of information on our indicators and our overlays. And the breadth indicators can be found in the Market Indicators section. And there you will see the Advanced Decline Line, Advanced Decline Percent, Advanced Decline Volume Line, and so on. If you're not a subscriber and you're interested in seeing how these breadth indicators work when you're charting them, you can get a one month trial all the time here. There's a link to tell you all about the different features that we offer. You'll strengthen your analysis. You can monitor your portfolio better. You can streamline your research. We've got award winning charts. You can create chart lists with all of these breadth indicators to easily follow them and see when they change and generate signals. All right, so that concludes this edition of On Trend and all you need to know about breath indicators. Thanks very much for tuning in and have a great day. Today's market volatility provides savvy traders and active investors with an abundance of profitable opportunities. At the Traders Expo Chicago, July 21st through 23rd, dozens of the most respected traders in the world, including Rick Santelli, John Najarian, Tom Sosnoff, Linda Rashke, and Ralph Acampora, will explain how they're adapting their strategies and share the specific trading opportunities they've identified in equities, commodities, forex, futures, and cryptocurrencies. Claim your free pass to join them at ChicagoTradersExpo.com.